But first, this week, the leaders of Ethiopia and neighboring Eritrea declare the end of a more than 20-year-long war. It's hoped that will help boost economic growth in East Africa. Ethiopia's economy has grown at a faster rate than any other African country in the past 10 years. And it's been trying to open up its economy. But foreign investors and local businesses complain a shortage of foreign currencies like the U.S. dollar are stifling the private sector. Mohamed Addo reports from Addis Ababa. This is the great Ethiopian Renaissance dam on the Blue Nile. Nearing completion, the project has been fully funded by the government and the people of Ethiopia. It's a fact many here are proud of. Yet ambitious infrastructure projects like the dam have put pressure on the country's foreign reserves, which are already in short supply. Foreign currency shortage is the worst that I've witnessed in my entire life. And it's all time low that we have heard of and seen. And this is because look at the economy, look at the construction sector, you look at the manufacturing sector, look at the import, everything in the government projects, all those that have been planned ambitiously have slowed down. Another cause for the crisis is that Ethiopia sells far less than what it buys. The International Monetary Fund says that Ethiopia's foreign reserves at the end of the 2016-2017 fiscal year stood at 3.2 billion less than what it spends on imports in two months. In recent years, Ethiopia has encouraged massive Chinese investment in industrial parks to create employment and increase exports. The government has directed banks not to issue foreign currency to importers who are not in sectors considered a priority, such as pharmaceuticals and manufacturing, and with no means of paying their suppliers, many have been forced to close down. At Addis Ababa's largest market, Mercato, traders complain of how bad business is. Faris Khalil imports textiles from China and Dubai. Getting supplies is a real challenge for us. Increasing prices are also keeping customers away. Last year, the government devalued the local currency by 15% in an effort to boost exports and contain rising inflation. But prices kept rising. We don't fix the prices. That is beyond us. The farmers in rural areas do depending on their production costs. Even Ethiopia's new Prime Minister, Abi Ahmed, acknowledges that there is no quick fix to the problem. For now, he's calling for more cooperation with the private sector. Ethiopia, a one-time ally of the Soviet Union, is now enduring some of the pains of capitalism. But they are growing pains. The IMF is forecasting a growth rate of 8.5% this year, far above the global average. For now, it seems Ethiopia is still an African economic force to reckon with. So joining us now from London is Charles Robertson, Global Chief Economist with Renaissance Capital. Good to speak with you again. So let's talk about the, uh, the growth picture first. Is Ethiopia going to be able to sustain these growth levels? We've done uh, a lot of work on Ethiopia. and. It's a very odd model they've got for development, but a very odd model that's produced very, very high growth. Um, on our last big report, uh, we focused on the fact that they were running out of foreign exchange to sustain that model. And they were going to have to start to raise dollars one way or another. They've done a euro bond, but it wasn't enough. Uh, and it was creating big distortions in the economy. So it's a matter of how can they get the cash. They've been borrowing from China. Um, and the recent declarations from the government suggest that they might start to raise the money by selling some of their kind of the, the golden goose, if you like, or at least selling stakes in their golden geese uh, of their major companies like Ethiopia Telecom or, or the airlines. Uh, and that way they can bring in the dollars that they need to be able to buy the investment goods that they need to be able to drive growth. What's your assessment uh, as well of the, of the digital economy in Ethiopia and how that factors into its economic growth? This is, uh, there's, there's an awful lot of PR, a very successful PR campaign that, that's making out Ethiopia to be kind of the next China. Um, and I, I think that that is a valid comparison. As long as you have the next China meaning with a 50-year lag, um, not a 10 or 20-year lag. If you want a 10-year lag behind China, go to Vietnam. But, but Ethiopia's uh, much, much further behind. And, and Part of this, we, we look at things like adult literacy. Less than half of the adults in Ethiopia can read or write in any language. 
Uh, that's not what you need if you're going to be a part of a digital economy. Um, you've got to at least be able to read what's on your mobile phone. They can't. Uh, and the consequence of low adult literacy, it's about 49% in 2015, is that you also cannot have an industrializing story either. And again, despite the PR, um, Ethiopia's manufacturing sector is around 4% of GDP. There's only eight countries in the world with smaller manufacturing sectors than Ethiopia. It's not what people think of when they think of Ethiopia. They think of textile mills and shoe factories um, and, and it being a competitor to Bangladesh. But the education numbers, the electricity numbers are just not there for either a digital economy or a, a big manufacturing sector. Uh, it's still a very rural, very poor agricultural economy. And one of the big stories uh, this, this week on Ethiopia is that they're mending fences finally now with Eritrea. How much of a peace dividend uh, is that going to potentially uh, bring for Ethiopia? With the peace deal with Eritrea, they can rebuild those links to Eritrea, create a second export route, and perhaps then get a better price when it comes to exporting their goods through the ports. Um, so there's a benefit for, for longer-term trade from that side of the story. Uh, in terms of, say, the defense budget or so on, I think, I think their major issue has been domestic security, not so much the problems with Eritrea, where you've just had stalemate for the best part of a generation. So it's, and in this regard, the prime minister is also seen as a new hope, someone who can perhaps ease the domestic tensions in Ethiopia, uh, and therefore perhaps the government will be able to invest a little less in defense, internal security, a little more in infrastructure. Charles Robertson in London, thanks very much for being with us. Pleasure to talk to you.